Hey there, welcome back. This is Dr. Gary Pepper, and this is my YouTube channel, Metabolism123. And if you're listening on audio podcast, it's Dr. Pepper, really. I'm an endocrinologist. I've been treating people for hormone and metabolic conditions for 40 years. And the uh, advent of the GLP-1 medications and their ability to cause significant weight loss has really turned things around for a lot of people who've been struggling. Postmenopausal women uh, who have a particular issue with weight gain, it has been uh, quite a benefit to uh, many people. Though we continue to worry about the long-term outcomes and side effects that may occur, we recently did an interview with Kelly, who is in that group uh, with menopause, and she is using the GLP-1 medication along with estrogen, and has done well after an initial rough start. And you can find her interview on our YouTube channel or on audio podcast. So there's been a recent study that was published in a journal called Menopause, of all things, that deals exactly with this new issue of whether or not estrogen could be useful in people with postmenopausal weight gain. And I wanted to share those results with you and, and discuss it briefly. As you know, uh, this is not for medical advice or treatment. You need to consult with your own physician for those things. However, I would appreciate it if you put a like on this episode because that helps us get the word out and also subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any upcoming uh, material that we're publishing. So without wasting more time, why don't we get right over to the slideshow? So we'll see you on the other side. Hold on. So what could be um, the reason that people tend to gain weight postmenopausally? Well, number one we would think of is um, lifestyle changes. At this time of life, People are often consumed with other things, such as worries about family, work, other stresses, and self-care efforts may decline. You may have less time for the gym. You may be making uh, bad choices at mealtime or finding your way to snacks as a way of stress relief, any number of things that could be happening. Number two, there's a natural tendency for us to lose uh, muscle mass as we get older. That happens in men and women. And unless you're really diligent about getting to the gym and doing uh, kinds of activity that keep your muscle tone uh, good, you will tend to lose some strength and lose some muscle. And muscle is your ally in the fight against weight gain because muscle burns a lot of calories. There's what we call the metabolic rate, which is the amount of calories we burn just sitting around doing our daily activities. And as uh, the amount of muscle declines, the number of calories that we're burning through the metabolic rate decline. So it's going to make it a lot easier to accumulate weight just on that basis. And number three is the obvious decline in estrogen that happens during menopause. So along with the reduction in estrogen that happens, there is now a tendency for the fat not only to accumulate more, but now it tends to be accumulating over the belly as opposed to the hips and butt and thigh, giving way to an apple shape, having previously, when we were younger, been that pear shape. Not only that, but the um, loss of muscle tone, particularly over the abdominal wall, may let the belly protrude even more, giving that uh, unsightly appearance that many people object to. So it's no wonder that with the advent of the GLP-1 drugs, which have shown themselves to be quite powerful in terms of reversing the weight gain process, that in particular, uh, postmenopausal women are now uh, seeking relief from the changes in their body that previously had been very difficult to control. So now I'd like to get into the uh, results of that new study that I had mentioned earlier about whether estrogen could be useful in postmenopausal women who are trying to lose weight. Certainly, uh, a lot of people get 
satisfying results with the GLP-1 medicine alone. But in this particular study, the uh, researchers looked at people who were using both uh, things like ozempic and estrogen replacement therapy. Now, estrogen has been used for many years for other purposes in menopause to reduce things like the hot flashes and moodiness. Uh, it's also good for the hair, skin, and nails. But in this case, the uh, researchers were most interested in its effect on the weight loss effort. And let's just have a look at this simple graph for a second. And what you'll see in the dark blue are the people taking estrogen along with their GLP-1 medication. And the people in the light blue are just the GLP-1 medication. And the result is that after one year, 53% of the people using estrogen and the GLP-1 lost over 15% of their body weight, where only 43% of the people on the GLP-1 lost that significant amount of weight. In either case, the results of the weight loss are pretty amazing. And another way to look at that is on this graph, you'll see in the dark blue, again, the people taking both estrogen and GLP-1. They managed to lose a maximum of 17% of body weight after one year, whereas the light blue on GLP-1 only lost 14%. Again, I'm not saying that either one of them uh, is a poor showing. 14% um, um, of loss of body weight is pretty outstanding. But again, we're looking for the overall effect of the combination of hormones, which appears, at least in this one small study, to be better. So I think that's information that we'll keep looking for more and larger studies to determine just how real that is. I would need to mention that estrogen use, even though it's been around for many, many decades in terms of postmenopausal symptoms, is controversial because of the increased risk of breast cancer. But in recent years, more information has allowed doctors to recognize who these group, the postmenopausal people are most at risk and who's at least risk, and therefore they're making more educated decisions about who can use estrogen postmenopausal. So again, these are decisions that need to be made between an individual and their healthcare provider since the risks are substantial, even though the benefits look to be quite tempting. I also wanted to talk about alcohol for a minute. Um, when I've talked to people about their daily calorie intake, many people skip over their alcohol use. But alcohol uh, is a wild card in the weight loss game. And that's because, um, first of all, alcohol has a lot of calories. It has almost as many calories as fat itself. So in a mixed drink, for example, if you have one ounce of alcohol, uh, that's the same as if you had one ounce of butter added to whatever it is you're consuming. So you really can't just discount alcohol uh, as you might, you know, uh, any other liquid. And also, you know, as you know, the alcohol tends to stimulate your appetite for various reasons. And that's why the waiter wants you to keep drinking because he knows that you'll be eating more. Um, it also has a complex effect on estrogen. And we're already dealing with a situation where estrogen lack is causing uh, weight gain problems. So throwing alcohol into the mix is just, as I mentioned before, is a wild card. You don't know exactly how it's going to wind up affecting you. I guess the best advice is take it easy when it comes to alcohol. Again, another question for you and your healthcare provider. What about natural approaches? Well, we would all love there to be natural substances, herbs or supplements that could help us lose weight and ease the hormonal issues that occur along with uh, menopause. Some uh, 
natural plant products have what is called phytoestrogen, which simply means plant-derived estrogen. Soy is one of the best known of these. And there are other uh, herbs that have been uh, studied in small studies, such as black cohosh and ginseng, which may have some benefits, but the studies, as I mentioned, are small, and the results are hard to interpret. And for now, uh, there is no consensus on whether these uh, natural approaches are really beneficial or not. Also, there is some concern that certain herbs may interact with prescription medications. Now, what about conventional lifestyle uh, approaches such as exercise, limiting portion size, consuming more fiber and less fat? These are highly recommended, somewhat harder to do than taking a shot of something like Ozempic uh, once a week. But in the long run, the people who are using those injections are going to face the issue whether they are going to need to stop using their medication and try to go without. The information that's available in general seems to suggest that people will regain their weight fairly quickly. So if you are using Ozempic or Wagavi or Manjaro, et cetera, you should be thinking about how the drug is making you alter your portion sizes, for example, so that when you do decide or if you do decide to cut back on the medication or stop using it, you won't go necessarily back to your old habits, and now you'll have the uh, information that you need to know when you're overdoing it, if you can uh, stick to those same habits that you developed while you're using the medication. So again, the disclaimer that we need to make is that these are complicated medical issues that you need to deal with with your own personal health care provider. Since the risks are high, even though the rewards are very tempting, if you want more information, you can go over to our website, metabolism.com, where we have a full library of blogs, videos, and audio podcasts, which can fill in some of the details that we may have skipped over here today. And again, this is all for educational purposes only, and please consult with your own doctors. So I hope you got something out of our slideshow for today, and if you have questions, you can email info at metabolism.com. We'll see if we can answer those questions or put them into our next uh, video podcast. So thanks for watching and take care.